It's five minutes after midnight and Mars should be high enough in the sky for the first view through the telescope. Chris, you've been telling us to be patient. Can we see it yet? <laughs> Well, there we've got it in our image intensified um, camera just there for you. And you can see it has climbed higher as well, as I said it would before. Um, and it might surprise you to know that I've come outside onto the roof of the telescope again to, to actually use a much smaller telescope to see pictures of Mars. Um, bigger isn't always better in astronomy. And although the Isaac Newton telescope is very good at seeing very faint objects, Mars is just so close at the moment, it's almost too bright to use the Isaac Newton telescope. So, we've been joined by uh, planetary photographer Damien Peach, who's borrowed the telescope for the night and is a bit of an expert at giving planetary pictures to us. And this is a live picture of Mars. I think it's probably the best live picture, perhaps the first live picture ever to be broadcast on television. Damien, how on earth have you managed to get this so clear? Oh, well, Chris, it's uh, actually a remarkably simple procedure. We've, uh, we're using a, a commercial web camera to capture a live video of the planet, and uh, here, here it is. So it's literally just a webcam image of Mars, which I just find extraordinary. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And although it's wobbling around a little bit, and we've got to remember that we're magnifying an area of the sky here that's a hundredth as wide as the full moon. So it's a very tiny bit of sky, and these wobbles that we're seeing, we aren't always aware of normally, but we see them very clearly when we're magnifying this bit of sky so much. And although it is wobbling around, and it's a tiny bit fuzzy still, you can make out some amazing features already on it. What are we seeing there? Uh, at this particular moment, we've got the uh, South Polar Cap and the famous uh, Sinus Meridiani on the uh, Central Meridian. Um, well, the thing that strikes me most about it is this complete north-south divide where you've got this smooth lowlands in the top that are this red colour and these rough highlands and this darker colour in the north very clearly and as, as Damien says that south pole too. But Damien you think you can do a bit better than this I hear? Yes, I do. I'm pretty confident that uh, I can come up with a very nice Mars image, yes. And you're going to get the computer to take out the, the best images and put them all together, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I'm going to uh, composite all the images together and hopefully uh, have a uh, nice image for this way. Well, look, you get on with that because there's no time to waste. Okay. And, um, Sophie, I think we need a bit more time just to improve this picture of Mars to make it the very best possible I can't tonight. believe. I can't so believe you can get... us soon. I can't believe you can get any better than that, Chris. That's absolutely amazing. Now, in many ways, Mars seems like a sister planet to the Earth, and that it even has weather. Now, Alex Deacon is with us again. Now, how is the weather different on Mars? Well, it's similar in some ways in that Mars has seasons like spring and summer. In fact, the Southern Hemisphere summer, or going into the summer at the moment, which is quite important, because that's when you get the big dust storms. You can see quite clearly the uh, polar ice caps there in the south, which indicates that it is the Southern Hemisphere. And so it does have amazing dust storms. It does have these huge dust storms. It gets very, it's got a very thin atmosphere. It's about 1% of the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere. So it, the atmosphere can't actually retain the heat as well so it, it has huge energy imbalances between the daylight side and the nighttime side so it creates these huge energy imbalances and the planet tries to balance those out by creating these huge winds which whip up the dust off the planet's surface and create these huge dust storms throughout the atmosphere which can sometimes really shroud the image and uh, we might see some of those in the coming weeks. What are the temperatures like on Mars? It's very cold. It's The average temperature is something like minus 60 degrees Celsius. Ooh. That's the average as well. It can get a lot, lot colder so it's, it's pretty chilly and the atmosphere is not all that favourable. It's uh, made of carbon dioxide so yeah. you do get some clouds actually mainly in the northern hemisphere summer when it's around the other side of the sun but they're made of carbon dioxide so it's very different to the, to the atmosphere of the Earth. Uh, Absolutely amazing. Well, Alex, I can't. This image is incredible, isn't it? Now, you may wonder why anybody would care about the weather on Mars, really, or what a difference it would make to them. Rajesh is with a couple of people who really do need to keep a close eye on weather conditions there, and you're about to find out why. Well, whilst you were watching that, Chris and Damien have been working on processing those Mars images. Chris in La Palma, how are they coming along? Well, Sophie, it's just been fantastic. I think Damien's success is, is going to bowl you over. Remember, he was taking all the best images that the computer could find and putting them together to make the ultimate picture of Mars. So, Damien, how have you got on? Well, basically, Chris, this is all the uh, frames I've selected. I've added them all together and uh, applied some sharpening. Wow. Obviously, all the detail has been brought out and, well, that... I mean, that speaks for itself, I think. I, t I tell you what, you're in, in danger of putting the Hubble telescope out of business. Well, thank you very much, and I'm 
I have to say, I think it's perhaps one of my best ever Mars images, so I'm delighted with it. Well, I can yeah. believe that. Sophie, what do you think? I think that's absolutely incredible. We have an expert here as well who says it's one of the best he's seen as well. <laughs> well, Professor Barry Jones is a planetary expert at the Open University. He joins us here. Hopefully we're going to see that again in a minute because it was absolutely beautiful. Just tell us what we're looking at here. Okay, well, this is the wonderful planet Mars. It's about half the diameter of the Earth, and prominent there you see the south polar cap, which is now in early spring, so it's shrinking a bit. Now, you might think that's water ice, but actually it's made of carbon dioxide. The very thin atmosphere of Mars is mainly carbon dioxide, and it's that which constitutes the, the, the polar cap, not water ice at so all. There's no water at all? There's water underneath it, water ice underneath it, but what you actually see there is, is dry ice, as we would say, you know, in, in, in gate terms. Um, now, the rest of the planet, you can see, is, 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 is in places dark, in places light. Now, those dark markings used to be thought to be vegetation until the era of the Space Age in the 1960s. And then we learned that they're not vegetation at all, unfortunately. But really, what we're looking at is just two different types of mineral. The bright areas are just very fine dust, and the dark areas are just rather coarse dust. And obviously, it's very famous for its color, isn't it? It's very famous for its color. This is due to a high iron content in the dust. That makes it red. That makes it red. And these features, these lovely features, are actually sorted by the winds. So it's all wind-driven dust. And the thing I love about it as well is the, the mountains on it. I mean, there's, what's it called? Olympus Mons. Well, Olympus Mons is, 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 is vast height, you know, 27 kilometers high. And it's something like three times the size of Everest. Th isn't that's it? right. It's a huge volcano, a huge shield volcano. Um, and there are several others as well. Well, I think that's amazing. Images we've taken tonight of Mars, I've never seen that in my life. And that was impressive, I have yeah. to say. Thank you very much for explaining that. And let's go back to Rajesh. That is a stunning image, I've got to admit. Let's go and find out what some of our guests at the party here. Uh, Liz, what did you think of that image of Mars? A fantastic image. As you can see, a lot of detail, all the frozen caps, like we were saying, and the different colours and the shading, and through the atmosphere, which, you know, it's often difficult to see optical images through atmosphere like that. Just so clear as well. Yeah, fantastic. Image. And like that polar ice cap. And the, the size of it, although Mars is a lot smaller than Earth, but the the detail and the pictures of it, it's fantastic images. Yeah, it's sort of Nigel over here, Nigel, kind of wearing a Mars coloured shirt on there. Exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing. <laughs> when they're looking, I've seen it for 20 years now, I've never seen anything like that tonight. It's just so clear, so good. So you've seen it before, you've seen images of Mars before? Oh yes, quite a bit, I guess, many, many years. So nothing, nothing, like nothing like that tonight. What was so different about it? What was so special about it tonight? The, the, the resolution by the CCD work, it really is uh, stunning compared to photography that used to be in the olden days. Okay, so good evening for you two. Oh, lovely. Excellent. Well, I think someone who is at home Home, enjoying themselves, having a good evening too, listening to uh, uh, what we've been seeing, watching what we've been seeing even. Uh, you'll know him, he's a lyricist, Sir Tim Rice. You know, Jesus Christ Superstar, Evita, all that malarkey. Famous for music, but also, did you know he has a telescope? And he's, uh, I think he's got it out now, haven't you? Sir Tim, you on the phone? I'm on the phone, I'm not actually on the telescope because I'm down here talking to you. Excellent, well, uh, you're enjoying the programme, I'm glad to say. Um, I am. Uh, what do you like about sort of stargazing? What, what's in it for you? Oh, golly, it's so hard. It's, it's rather romantic. It's full of mystery, and um, I guess that's my approach, it's just, uh, it's, it's a tiny glimpse of what we don't understand. And what did you think of those images of Mars? Absolutely amazing. I mean, Mars is quite bright here in Cornwall tonight, it's, um, or in my bit of Cornwall, you can see it pretty clearly, as you have obviously been able to for the last, you know, few weeks. Um, it's not the perfect night, but I'm hoping that in the next four or five days it'll be absolutely clear as a bell and one can have a really good butchers at it. Well, you stay tuned and you'll get a perfect view here, okay? Okay. All right, so Tim, one question, last question to Tim. Do you know Patrick Moore? I have met Patrick. I'm an enormous admirer of him, and uh, I'm delighted to see him on the programme. Well, and he's, and he's also... Right now, he's right here. Patrick. He's also a great cricketer. Oh, yeah. Tim Wright says hello. Well, give my very best regards. Oh, he says you're a great cricketer, but we're not interested in cricket just at the moment. We're interested in Mars. What do you think of those images? They are very, very good. And one important point, Mars can deliver global dust forms, which I deserve them. Well, that's what I'm doing on now. And the very good opposite of 1970, uh, it was completely obscure, but we're getting good views. Therefore, anyone with a telescope, even by three inch, will be able to see the caps, the red deserts, the dark market, they'll see very well. And the images that we've seen tonight, how do they compare to the ones you've seen in Mars? They're really good. After all, we've got a, well, one of our biggest telescopes, and for La Palma, Mars is higher than this year, so those results are staggeringly good. That is brilliant, isn't it? Okay, well, Patrick, stay there, enjoy the rest of the party. Sophie, praise indeed from the main man. Lovely.